To God be the glory and praise, I would like to share my dream dated August the 3rd. And in this dream, I pass by this area wherein the water is gushing forth from the ground. So it's a fountain of water. And so I saw myself coming close to the guy who is actually, who was there. So the guy was probably drinking from that water, from that fountain of water. And I came close to it also. And I was talking to this person. And I noticed that my clothes, my 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 pants side was, um, was wet. And so probably I was also drinking uh, in that fountain of water together with, or yeah, together with this other person. And I was talking to him. And I noticed that because it was wet, that my under my undergarment was actually exposed so i'm seeing my blue panty inside so i was like rubbing the wet part of my pants so that my undergarment is not going to be shown but the lord is trying to tell us something about why it's going to be shown it is like revealing what is inside me and so scenario change i walk in this cave area i walk in this room it's a modern office but it is underground so there's a staircase going underground and as i go there it's it's a modern place okay it's a modern uh, office so i went down there on that underground tunnel underground place office I noticed there's a lot of people underground. They were inside. But one thing I've noticed was this office was so modern that they even have a receptionist. There's a lady in this uh, cave underground or a modern office underground. There's a table and there's a lady on the table. And then I have to go around passing by staircase. And they also have water inside. They have water inside. But one thing I've noticed was inside this water, there's a lot of people. A lot of people and they're all holding different kinds of idols. Some of them are holding Buddha. Others have another statues. Others have different kinds of signs of idolatry. And we all know, brothers and sisters, right at this very moment, there's actually a lot of modern equipment, underground tunnels and hotels for the rich who got all their idols of money and treasures, right? So in this dream, I'm seeing they also have water inside. So they're probably having like a swimming pool or something. And we all know they have that kind. But I'm seeing they have also body of water. But they all have their idols with them. Idols with them uh, underground. So as I was walking away from that place. Because I'm seeing you know how it looks like inside. As I was walking away. Suddenly there's five people. Four or five people. That came across you know came towards me they're young men but they have swords with them they started to jump towards me and try to hit me and kill me with their sword they tried to stab me but one thing i've noticed i suddenly have this very long arrow sword it is like a sword very long but it looks like an arrow that when they come towards me to kill me with their sword i just suddenly poke them so easy and kill them and they disappear so it's like we all know brothers and sisters that the words of god are like a you know like a double edged sword so even these enemies i believe that they're trying to kill me when i went down on their territory they can't harm me because the presence of the Lord is in me, that His word is mightier than their sword or whatever things that they have in their hand. Because my God is a mighty God. And so that's what happened. I had just actually poked them individually and they all disappeared. And I was not even so scared with them. I was just like standing and poking them so confident. And then suddenly scenario changed. I saw myself walking in a market, in a dark market. And no one was in there. But as I walked there, I noticed I saw this little girl. But she's like demon possessed. That when she saw me, she immediately just ran. I tried to chase her in order for her to be gone and to be removed and disappear and be killed in Jesus' name. Amen. She ran away. But in the name of Jesus, she will be killed and disappear in Jesus' name. Amen. And so we all know, why will I go to the market? It's a dark market. 
We all know, brothers and sisters, that even during the time of Jesus, he even toppled down the mark, uh, the the temple, you know, the tables on the temple, because people are making it as a marketplace, a place of robbers. And this is probably why the Lord is trying to tell us that a lot of places, the marketplace, the business establishment, a lot of people who are dealing in this environment, a lot of them are demon-possessed, that they're selling properties or they're selling things that are offered to the demon. They're selling things that are patronizing the demons and they're also cheating and stealing. And that's why these demons need to be killed in Jesus' name. Amen. And so now, scenario change again. And I even forgot, I saw this girl, when she saw me, she immediately ran, right? And she turned into a small object that ran fast. And I know it's a demon. And then suddenly, scenario change, I saw myself like flying and holding my mom and my dad in both hands. I No, I was actually like holding them where, you know, I'm flying them. I'm holding them both uh, on my my. Uh, on my one side was my dad and the other side was my mom and they were both crying and I was like flying uh, bringing them up high and they were like weeping and crying and I was telling them this is what I was telling you this is what the Lord is trying to tell us and it's just like reminding me the way I spoke to them it's just like telling me this is what I've been telling you for so long regarding the dream that the Lord told me about the Jerusalem it's like you know I'm going to bring you back home with the Lord something like that it's like I was telling my dad this is what uh, you know the Lord showed you in one of my dream last time so it's like trying to tell I was like trying to tell my dad you know the scenario that they're having right now the situation that you're having right now you're weeping and crying because the Lord is trying to tell you about you to repent to repent because we've been until now we've been discussing about it that they need to repent and be right with the lord to humble down themselves and to repent and not to think that you know you can handle everything by yourself but trust in the lord because he will put everything according to his will you know we're not superheroes that we can do everything even if you want to if it's not according to god's will you can do nothing so I, you know, the Lord is trying to tell us to trust in Him with all our body, mind, heart, and soul, and all our strength, because He will just put everything according to His will. And then after that, I was uh, scenario change again. I was in this room, and um, it seems like it's a different kind. I uh, know I was in this house, and it's a different kind of house, and it seems like this house is mine. It's like I bought it uh, from somebody else and the name of the owner seemed to be Lila. It's like she owned, she used to own the land and I assume it. And, uh, you know, I was looking at the house. It's like a simple kind of house. And, you know, I was in there. So it's like uh, the house, it's like a brick house, but it's not fully furnished. It's like not yet uh, painted or something. And um, I'm seeing it as my own. And so I was inside and as I look outside, I noticed that the black couch that was, uh, uh, you know, probably used by the old owner was actually outside. It was thrown out. It's a leather couch, but it's black. And I said, why did they throw that away? And then they said, you know, uh, uh, it's the old owner. So I have to remove it and I'm going to replace it with something new. And I actually don't like black. So I... You know, I like light colors or probably white. And so anyway, uh, so I said that house is mine. So as I was looking, and it's so funny, brothers and sisters, because just this morning, today is, I think, um, the 5th. I don't know what date, October, and this dream is on the 3rd. So if today is the 5th or 6th, I don't know. My uh, my husband was just telling me something about us buying a buying an old house too and we assume it and then i was telling him is it a brick house because i have a dream about this and he said yeah i said you know so it's funny how the lord works and praise be to god so anyway uh we i was inside and i was looking outside and i noticed that as i was looking outside 
I noticed my daughter with her cousin and the family of her cousin who were actually like born again to they were passing by if this is the house th there's a wide road here on the side they actually passed by on a very narrow road towards my house and i was telling them why do you have to pass by there and there's you can actually go around and pass by the the wide road why do you have to go to the to the easier one to the easier one which is a very narrow if you think about it the lord spoke about the narrow road and the wide road right and i was actually telling them why do you have to pass by the narrow which is actually the shorter and the easiest way and i was telling them it's so tight there why do why don't you just go around and pass by the wide road which i rebuke in jesus name amen i don't want them to go to the wide road road i want them to pass by the narrow road which is actually right in the eyes of the lord praise be to god so as they go in the house we actually started you know they helped me in this house i know it was mine but they were also there and they helped us prepare this long table it was actually a wooden table rectangular and we started they started to put like six or eight to twelve people that can sit there and you know they converted the, the table to a rectangular uh long one in this living room and then after that scenario changed i saw myself in another room I'm, I'm supposed to take a shower i was covering myself with a small blanket and i can even hardly cover everything because the blanket is not enough you know and then um because i'm supposed to take a shower and then scenario change again i saw myself going into the house of my daughter and her husband and they're actually cementing the ground or their the, the foundation of their house and the cement is you know the color that they're mixing is like a clear glass a clear glass that they're cementing on the ground and that's their foundation and i noticed that in the house i was telling them i'm so hungry and they actually showed me the open refrigerator with the food inside it's like they're telling me just help yourself go in and get what you wanted to eat you know so anyway it's just like trying to tell us that uh i went into the point that i really help i need help and they opened their house for me to help me and they were the one helping me right now uh you know uh helping me pay all my bills and then i can do what needs to be done for the glory of god and i give the glory and praise to god the father and so what is this dream time trying to tell us brothers and sisters why am i seeing a fountain of water coming out of the ground we all know in psalm 36 for with you is the fountain of life in your light we see light jesus is the fountain of life it is also written in jeremiah 2 verse 13 for my people have committed two evils they have forsaken me the fountain of living water and they have dug sinsern cistern for themselves broken cistern that cannot hold water these are the people who actually just don't trust in the fountain of life who, who is jesus christ but they actually just trust in their own container that's why they're digging underground because they believe they can survive with their own container of water to have everlasting life they don't know it but those people who go to the real fountain of life who is jesus christ they will see the light and they will receive the life everlasting with jesus christ the lord said in john 4 verse 14 jesus said to her everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again but whoever drinks the water i give him will never thirst indeed the water i give him will become in him a fount of water springing up to eternal life praise be to god so do you remember brothers and sisters when i was saying that i went into the fountain of water and there's a guy in there that i was talking to <laughs> the lord is just telling me he was the one in that water i was talking to him it's like the story of this lady the prostitute that went into the well going to get the water and jesus told them that everyone who drinks water 
will not be thirsty again. And so when I went in there, he actually introduced me. That's why I was wet. Because I drink the water, the living water of Jesus Christ. And He washed me clean. He forgave me from all my sins. And He actually told me in my heart and through His words in the Bible that all the sins I had in the past are remembered no more. He is the fountain of the living water. And if we come close to Jesus Christ and have a closer relationship with Him, he will give you a fountain of living water that will be in us as we learn more and have closer relationship with Him. That words of Jesus Christ, who is He Himself, will also be a fountain of living water inside our heart that we will be sharing that water to all the people we know for the glory of God. So brothers and sisters, the Lord said in Isaiah 55 verse 1, Come, all of you who thirst, come to the waters and you without money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. This is the reason why the Lord wants us to come to Him, you know, to come to Him and know Him and have a relationship with Him. It's not for sale. You can buy a Bible, pray, pray, pray constantly. When I get out of the crooked uh, church that I went in, from the Catholic church and from the Christian church that I went in, and I noticed that they're having witchcraft and everything until we found another one. But then, you know, we end up just reading the Bible in the house, listening to, to the church service in YouTube or in TV, asking the Lord to teach us. When you read the Bible, speak to the Lord and ask Him to preach to you, teach you His words. He will. And that's how the Lord is going to give us wisdom, understanding, and discernment that no one can deceive us. And that blessing of the Lord will keep us strong and keep us away from the deceiving spirit. Because a lot of the churches right now are compromising and are also deceived. And we don't want to be deceived. In Jesus' name, amen. So, brothers and sisters, the Lord said in Isaiah 58 verse 11, The Lord will always guide you. He will satisfy you. Satisfy you in a sun scorched land and strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose water never fails. And that's why when you feed yourself with the words of God, that's why He said you, He's a fountain of a living water. Because what we're seeing right now in the world, the persecution is really coming. There's a lot of trials and tribulation. There's a lot of purification. We are undergoing through fire. But God is our defense. He is there walking with us. He is there he is there always with us until the end of time. For He promised He will never forsake us. He will never abandon us. And that's why even there's drought that is going to happen everywhere. Whether there's going to be flooding, earthquake, or something everywhere, God is protecting His children. Brothers and sisters, in Matthew 5 verse 6, the Lord said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they will be filled. Praise be to God. You know, brothers and sisters, I love to do this video because it is not just me speaking, but I'm learning from the Lord. And I know through this, it's you and I learning together and growing together with the Lord through His words. Praise be to God. So I believe, you know, as I was drinking the living water, and my white clothes get wet, exposing, exposing my blue underwear. So what's white and blue represents again in the Bible? I was wearing white and then when I was drinking the living water, the blue was exposed as my undergarment, you know. 
what is this trying to tell us brothers and sisters blue is the third primary color right it spiritually signifies the healing power of god it is the most sublime sub, uh, subject and color which represents biblically the word of god so it's like trying to tell us brothers and sisters that the word of god is my undergarment the lord gave me the undergarment his words to protect me to cover me so i won't get naked it's the words of god the words of god protecting us not to be naked not to be exposed because we don't want to be naked you know we are naked in the eyes of the lord nothing is hidden in his eyes but it's like trying to tell us that we are covered and protected by the words of god so the very fact that the sky is blue stands for the presence of yahweh so god's presence is always with me and to those christians who are listening right now also so god's chosen nation israel is also donate denoted as blue from the time of david in matthew 9 21 the woman who has an issue of blood for 12 years he said, I shall be whole again if I touch that blue garment. The garment him is also blue. Do you remember the video that I uh, I posted uh, several months ago? When the Lord healed the big cyst or the tumor or the cancer on my chest? Remember, I was scheduled in the hospital because uh, my a certain part of my body was also removed because of the cancer cell, cancer tumor cells before. And I have my leukemia before that the Lord healed. And so we thought, you know, it's another cancer, cancer again that came back. But then I prayed to the Lord to heal me. And then several days after, that huge one was gone. And so as I was praying to the Lord on my knees, praying and thanking God, and I heard Him spoke to me and saying, Woman, your faith healed you. So remember, that woman was actually this lady who was actually who actually grabbed the hem of Jesus. Uh, what's this uh, garment in order for her to be healed? And so this is the reason why I was wearing the blue, because out of the words of God, I was healed. I am healed. And I am blessed by the Lord and the presence of the Lord is in me. I give the glory and praise to God. And this is not just for me. If you follow the same thing and you do have a closer relationship with the Lord, follow Him and be obedient to Him and read His words constantly. The presence of the Lord is with you, especially if you are born again, because He will give you the gift of the Holy Spirit. Praise be to God. The blue represents heaven, Holy Spirit, and authority. How about the white? White represents the bride of Christ. We have surrender, harvest, light, righteousness, and conquest. Just like the title that the Lord led me in this channel, Jesus Bride. Because we are the bride of Jesus. So if you look at these brothers and sisters, what is the importance of the white clothing for us what is the importance of that white clothing when you go to revelation 19 verse 7 the lord said let us rejoice and celebrate and give him the glory for the marriage of the lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready she has been given the finest of pure white linen to wear for the fine linen represents the good deeds of god's holy people praise be to god so when we are bearing fruits for the kingdom of god god is telling us that we are preparing ourselves not just repenting from our sins you know we constantly have the repentance walking righteously with the lord reading the the words of god uh you know having a constant relationship with the lord and also bearing much fruits for his kingdom and that is the sign when you are doing the good deeds for the glory of god some people are saying you know your good deeds are not going to lead you to heaven brothers and sisters jesus is the only way the truth and the life 
No one comes into the Father except through Him. So if you accept Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, you are safe. If you believe He died on the cross for your sins, you repent from your sins, you accept Him as your Lord and your Savior, you believe that after three days He rose again, you are safe if you confess that in your mouth. But that's not it. That's not just it, I mean. You're safe, but the Lord wants us to be born again, to receive the Holy Spirit. So read His words in order for you to, to receive the wisdom and understanding and discernment. So once you read it and you are born again, you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit in you will guide you and lead you and teach you to the words of God because He comes from God. So He will be giving you wisdom, understanding, and discernment. He will be teaching you on things that He heard from God, and He will be teaching you of things that you need to do. And now when you're bearing the fruits of the Spirit, generosity, love, peace, joy, self-control, and all those things, you are, you are doing the deeds, the deeds that the Holy Spirit is helping you for the glory of God. And so you're given the white garment. So that white gown where as we live our life, you know, it's already given to us. We want it to be clean and pure. We don't want it to have any stain. So therefore, don't involve yourself in other wicked stuff. So it's not going to be stained. So now, brothers and sisters, in Revelation 3 verse 4, the Lord said, But you do have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their garments. And because they are worthy, they will walk with me in white. See? Those people who didn't soil their garments, they will walk, we will walk with the Lord in white garments. You know, since we are born again, I believe, excuse me, I believe that we, you know, the Lord gave us the undergarment. He gave us the white, the white gown for our deeds. We are serving the Lord. We are His disciples. And so as we walk, we want to maintain that white dress to be white linen. No spot, no wrinkle. And so avoid yourself watching porns. Avoid yourself doing wicked stuff. Avoid yourself from screaming, getting mad, yelling, cursing, whatever. Avoid yourself from all wicked ways and idolatry in order for your gown to remain white and pure. So brothers and sisters, in the last days, we will come back with the Lord. That's why the Lord said in Revelation 19 verse 14, the armies of heaven dress in fine linen white and pure follow him on white horses praise be to god and that's the reason why we will be coming back with the lord and praise be to god the lord showed me he gave me a white horse and so we need to remain pure in the eyes of the lord and not to be carried with all idolatry and te treasures of the world so when the living water touches me from the white clothes it reveals the blue undergarments in them in me so what does it mean it means that the presence of god is in me the blue represents heaven holy spirit and authority so therefore, when the Lord, the presence of the Lord is in us, because we are born again, we are given the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in us and we're given authority to trample upon tread and, co and tread upon cobra and uh, all the enemies in Jesus name. Amen. And that's the reason why when I was being attacked by those guys with sword, in this underground bunkers what happened the lord gave me a long sword arrow that was able to poke them and kill them in an instant so fast and that represents the words of god that's why the lord wants us to remember and put his words in our heart and bind it in our neck and carved it in our hearts so how do you carve those words in your heart remembering the words and you also have to, yeah, a lot of people, they memorize it. You know, we need to memorize the words of God. And the easiest way is to sing them. Sing the words of God. You easily absorb them. 
especially if you have hard time with uh, you know memorizing so brothers and sisters since i drink the living water what comes out of my mouth is the word of god because the lord said when you constantly you know eat the words of god drink the living water you will have a spring of the fountain of living water in you and that's why wherever you go you just won't stop speaking about the words of god wherever you go whatever you do because that words of god since the holy spirit is in you he will just guide you when to talk and who to talk to so it will really just you will just be surprised brothers and sisters that you will just be in a certain place and suddenly you know out of out of um, the conversation of others sometimes you will just go in there and then sometimes you will just suddenly go in flowing in with the words and conversation that you will suddenly speak about the words of god and you will just realize that the people listening to you at that very moment they are actually in pain and waiting and needing the words of god to comfort them and god showed this to me a lot of times and this is how we are going to bear fruits for the kingdom of god even if you go to mcdonald's you you know you go to chick-fil-a you go to h -E, you know you go to walmart you go to wherever you go to the the brisket places you know you go to coles you go to wherever brothers and sisters to the mall you can speak about the words of god so this is why god said in hebrew 4 verse 13 nothing in all creation is hidden from god everything is naked and exposed before his eyes and he is the one to whom we are accountable and this is the reason why we are naked in the eyes of the lord if we do the deeds, if we bear fruits for the kingdom of God, God knows your the intention of your mind in your heart. If you are just doing this because you are obliged to do it, it's so different, brothers and sisters. But if you do it because you know that you wanted to please Almighty God the Father, our Yahweh, the great I Am, the Alpha and the Omega, you want to please Him because you love Him. He knows what's in your mind and in your heart. And He will be blessing you. He will be blessing us. And God knows that. And He will give crowns. He will give jewels on our crowns in the last days. Praise be to God. So why did I go to this cave underground? And there's an office there. There's also a body of water inside with people in it. Brothers and sisters, the Lord said in Isaiah 2 verse 19, People will flee to the caves in the rocks and to holes in the ground from the fearful presence of the Lord and the splendor of His majesty when He rises to shake the earth. In that day, people will throw away to the molds and baths their idols of silvers and idols of gold, which they made to worship. They will flee to caverns in the rocks and to the overhanging crags from the fearful presence of the Lord and the splendor of His majesty when He rises to shake the earth. Brothers and sisters, they will even ask the rock to fall on them. There's a Bible verse about that. They wanted to die, that's why they're asking the rocks to fall on them, but they don't die because they're already dead. You know, they're dead in spirit. And if they will die in flesh, they're still both double dead. Right at this moment, the prophecy of the Lord is actually coming out. It's actually coming into pass. And you see now everywhere people are digging underground. Why are they digging underground? Because they know they're going to perish. They don't know that spiritually their body, their spirit knows that they're going to perish because they're living a wicked and sinful life that they know they're going to hide underground because when Jesus comes, they're going to perish they're going to perish and they will regret all the wickedness and sinful detestable things that they're doing in this earth and this is why i'm seeing them with all their statues with all their idols in them 
It's not just the statues, brothers and sisters, that is a sign of idolatry. Idolatry is also wickedness, wickedness, and a greediness, and other stuff that are symbols of idolatry. God wants us to trust Him and follow Him with all our heart. And so, brothers and sisters, they will hide in the day of judgment. The Lord said in Isaiah 2, brothers and sisters, the day of the Lord or the day of judgment. This is the word of the Lord. You, Lord, have abandoned your people, the descendants of Jacob. They are full of superstitions from the east. They practice divination like the Philistines and embrace pagan customs. Their land is full of silver and gold. There is no end to their treasures. Their land is full of horses. There is no end to their chariots. Their land is full of idols. They bow down to the work of their hands, to what their fingers have made. So people will be brought low and everyone humbled. Do not forgive them. Go into the rocks, hide in the ground from the fearful presence of the Lord and the splendor of His majesty. This is the word of Isaiah in the Old Testament. He spoke this and wrote this down inspired by the Holy Spirit long time ago. Did he ever thought that the last generations are going to hide underground? Probably during those times when Jesus, you know, when Jesus came, there are a lot of people also probably hiding underground. But at our time, the end times, these people are hiding underground and they're doing it right now. So why am I seeing boys with swords and knives and attack me but they failed and died? Why? This will come into an end, brothers and sisters. God will stop all this fight and Satan and his minions will be defeated forever and be thrown into the lake of fire for eternity. The Lord said in Isaiah 2 verse 4, he will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations will not take up swords against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Come, descendants of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Praise be to God. Brothers and sisters, God is a loving God. He's a forgiving God. He's calling us now to repent from our sins, be right with the Lord, and follow His command. And so, when the time comes, when He's going to judge the living and the dead, all this fighting and war will be put into an end, and all this wicked will be thrown into the lake of fire because when Jesus appears in the cloud, his mouth, he will speak the word. And his word is a double-edged sword that will go through even through the bone marrow of any human and they will all die. And they will be thrown into the pits of hell. God said, no weapon that is formed against us will prosper. I believe this is the reason why I was not killed and the Lord's protecting me because the Lord said we always have to put his words in our heart that no weapon that is formed against us will prosper. This is the Lord's word in Hebrew 4 verse 12. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. So brothers and sisters, when people are fighting against you, this is the reason why the Lord said don't fight back. Fight back in a godly way by using the words of God and when you use the words of God they will be defeated because that words of God is actually a double-edged sword so when the time comes that the Lord said hey you know just like what he said to the apostles you need to have your swords in hand sold your cloth and you know your cloak and 
buy you a sword if God's willing that in the end times he will tell us you know you need to defend yourself you know so be it it's according to the words of God but always remember the word of God itself you know the words of God is actually Jesus himself and that's a sword so powerful given to us that we have the authority to trample upon the evil things they can we can trample the snake and the cobra and we are given authority against this uh, evil stuff satan and his minion in jesus name so this is why you know so why is this tiny demon running in the market as she sees me we all know just like what i said you know market is a den of robbers filled with wickedness and demons and we can see now they're escalating. They're selling uh, drinks that are offered to the idols or monsters drink, whatever. They're s feeding food. They even have food now that they have monster cake design food that are black cookies and whatever that are black with demon design. Clothes with demon design. Purses with skulls and demon designs. Cl Name it. They have it. So, we are not supposed to patronize any form of demons because we are the children of light. So, brothers and sisters, the Lord said we need to draw near to God constantly, constantly, every second, every minute of our life. The Lord said in James 4 verse 6, but He gives us more grace. This is why it says god opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble submit yourself then to god resist the devil and he will flee from you draw near to god and he will draw near to you cleanse your hands you sinners and purify your hearts you double-minded why am i seeing you know why am i seeing my dad and carrying them because they started to get so proud and God is showing this to us, to me as an example, for me to understand what He wants me to speak at this very moment. He wants us to lay humble because Jesus came here on earth as a humble man and He wants us to be humble. He created heaven and earth and He can actually, if He can create heaven and earth and mountains and trees and the sun and the stars he can he can even created he even created the mountain of gold and treasures he owns everything but he came down on earth as a humble man and he wants us to be humble because he wants us to recognize that he is the creator of heaven and earth that we need him constantly in our life because brothers and sisters other people when they have everything in their life they have all the treasures of the world they started to forget the creator who actually gave them all those blessings and so god wants us to draw near to god whether we have the money, whether we have the treasures or not, He wants us to draw near to Him. Because He said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and everything will be added unto you. He will give whatever we need. Whether it's abundant, whether it's average, or whether it's less. It's according to His will. But whether you have the great treasures of the world that the Lord wants to give you to give to the poor and help them in order to do your ministry, in order for Him to help us do the ministry, to help the poor, feed them, give them shelter, and preach the words of God, it's according to God's will. So we have to submit to God. And when we submit to God, we keep constantly in His words, repenting constantly and constantly in the presence of the Lord. The enemy will flee from us. That's why you will notice people who are living a wicked life, when they come see you, they re take note of this, brothers and sisters. I asked the Lord for so long for this when I was young. I was telling Him, Lord, why is it that People will just get mad at me for no reason. I didn't do anything to them. I didn't even know them. 
I will just walk in this place and then my friend will just pour dirty, you know, when she's washing the dishes, all those dirt there, she will just dump it on me. And people will just get mad at me, even at my workplace, for no reason. They just like, there's something in me that they're mad of. Until I found Jesus Christ. Until I found Jesus Christ. And I understand through the words of God that if they persecute you, they persecuted me first. That's the word of the Lord. They hated you because they hated the Lord. So when we love the Lord Jesus, when we are born again, the Lord give us the gift of the Holy Spirit. The presence of the Lord is in us. So because the Holy Spirit is in us, they don't have the Holy Spirit in them. They have the spirit of the demon. Therefore, demons don't like the presence of the Lord. That's why they will hate us because their God is Satan. We actually discern who are the children of God. And we love them too. We smile at them. We talk to them. We hug them even if we knew them from the start. They will smile at us. You can see the presence of the Lord in them. And you can see the presence of the enemy in the enemy's personality. Because it is shown from the outside and from their mouth. And it will come what's in their inside. So why is my mom and dad crying in this dream? I was comforting them, telling them about the love of the Lord. I told them this is the reason why the Lord showed you something in another dream that I showed them. And I even mentioned to them about the new Jerusalem. It means Jesus is coming. So therefore, they need to prepare and they need to repent. What is the Lord trying to tell us, brothers and sisters, in Isaiah 2 verse 11? The Lord said, the eyes of the arrogant will be humbled and human pride brought low. The Lord alone will be exalted in that day. The Lord Almighty has a day in store for all the proud and lofty. Meaning lofty, they are making themselves, exalting themselves. They, they're putting their character, they're arrogant, they're putting themselves so high. Okay, they exam they're lofty. For all that is exalted, and they will be humbled. The arrogance of men will be brought low. And human pride humbled. The Lord alone will be exalted in that day, and the idols will totally disappear. Praise be to God. So the Lord is trying to tell us, brothers and sisters, whether, you know, whether you're rich, whether you have money or not, don't be arrogant and don't be conceited and don't put yourself in a pedestal that you are the high mighty. Don't. Because it's only God and Jesus Christ who is high and mighty. You know, other people are fighting about Jesus and God to be one and others are fighting to be together. Brothers and sisters, I saw Jesus and God together more than more or less 30 times. Okay, so God the Father, uh, God the Father, they say that they are one, but at the same time, I'm seeing them in a different identity too. God the Father is so giant, He's so big, so huge, and Jesus Christ is like a regular man like us. And so I know they're one, they're also one, because Jesus, when you see Jesus, you see God, but Jesus also is calling God as His Father. So there's a mystery in there that, you know, we don't need to argue. All we have to do is believe and trust in the Lord. Because the Lord said, just have faith. Because the wisdom of the Lord is beyond our understanding. And so, brothers and sisters, the Lord said in the last days, all those idols, the you know, the people struggling to have money and idols, whatever, those will disappear in the last days. And God wants us to understand that everything comes from Him. Everything comes from Him. And we need to humble down. We need to recognize that only God is the mighty God. And we're just the creation of the Lord. Whatever blessing the Lord gives us, we have to thank Him and glorify Him. So why am I in this house that I know uh, it's my house? It's like I bought a new, uh, I bought uh, an old house and I was taking over this house. It's a brick house, but it's a... Uh, like uh, owned by somebody and I um, I know it was mine already and I took off those black couch and you know black has something to do with the you know other people like black but 
I really just don't like too much black but probably you know the black couch represents the darkness of those people who used to live there and that was taken out of that house and uh, I was there it was my dwelling so brothers and sisters before I pr proceed to that the Lord reminded me I skip one remember what the Lord said in Luke 14 verse 10 those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted and that's the reason why the lord wants us to stay humble because he's going to exalt us up high i'd rather choose that one i'd rather choose to humble myself and he's going to raise me up rather those people who want to put themselves up and the lord will put them down humble them down we'd rather humble ourselves because the lord will raise us up and exalt us so why am i in this new house or in this house that the lord gave me you know we all know brothers and sisters that we will all have a home our eternal dwelling in heaven and i also believe that the lord will give us our home and a shelter here on earth as we wait for him right so the lord said in second corinthians 5 verse 7 for we walk by faith not by sight we are confident then and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the lord so we aspire to please him whether we are here in this body or away from it brothers and sisters there's actually a two literal way of uh, seeing this right first is our dwelling which is the shelter it's our home but our eternal home is actually in the new jerusalem with jesus christ in heaven and oh no not in heaven because we will be brought in the new jerusalem here when jesus comes and we will dwell with him and at the same time our temple or our dwelling which is also our body we have to take care of it because this is our temporary temporary dwelling and home while waiting for the lord because once the lord jesus comes and call us we will be changed into a new glorified body to enter okay to enter into our spiritual dwelling also in the new jerusalem with jesus christ and so god promised to bring us home with him we have to remember that the lord said in john 14 verse 1 to 3 he said do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. It is where, if it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. Praise be to God. Brothers and sisters, that's the promise of the lord to each and every one of us who trust in him and wait patiently with him do you know how it feels brothers and sisters when you hear that words of god telling you that i tell you uh when i was um i think yeah a year ago or more than a year ago i had that video i'll prepare a place for you google that one brothers and sisters i was crying at that time i was really crying and weeping there's something going on in the house that i was weeping and then i was at the living room crying to the lord and you know what had happened with my eyes oh uh, when my eyes closed in 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 an instant it started to turn light there's light and then i saw the clouds like a like a, a cloud that is like it's so hard just look at it just google it exactly because i you know i don't totally remember exactly the details but i knew that i my eyes were closed that time i was crying and then all of a sudden i saw the formation of the clouds as my eyes closed if you close your eyes you don't see anything right but in this it's like you're looking at the uh like a reality i'm seeing the clouds formation and then it started to open up and I saw Jesus Christ telling me, come home with me. When I heard his voice and I saw him and he said, come home with me, I wept. I wept and I even said, Lord, I know I'm going home with you. But I said, you know, I still have my family with me and I still have, you know, I still have to stay with my family. But that very moment, I really cried. And now I'm crying 
because God wants us to go him, go home with Him. He wants us home with Him. He wants us home with Him. And He wants us to be prepared and He wants us to be ready. When He comes, all those tears in the eyes will be washed away. Those Christians who are hungry with the words of God, they will be filled. And I know God has a plan for us. He's just waiting for the last Gentile to be saved. And once that person is saved, Jesus is coming. All the signs that He said in the Bible are here. All we have to do is just trust Him. I know it seems to be scary. Other people, if you talk to non-Christians and tell them Jesus is coming and these are the things happening around, they're thinking you're crazy because they don't see it. That's why their eyes are blind. Their eyes are blind. They didn't see the truth. And for us whose eyes are open to see, ears, our ears are open to hear. We know the clock is ticking, that Jesus is coming. It's right there anytime. He wants us to prepare, brothers and sisters. And others are still sleeping. Others are still sleeping. Brothers and sisters, so why am I seeing my daughter and the other family family member passing by the small road leading to this house? I believe that aside from the literal, literal house that the Lord's going to provide for me while waiting for His coming, I believe that this house represents our house with Jesus Christ in the New Jerusalem. So why am I seeing my other daughter and... Uh, the fam another family passing through the narrow narrow road god said in matthew 7 verse 13 to 14 the narrow and the wide gate wide gates the lord said enter through the narrow gate for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction and many enter through it but small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life and only a few find it Brothers and sisters, God clearly said this. And if you haven't watched my video about my friend who died three times, she died and came back to life and the Lord showed her the narrow door, the small door and the wide door. The wide door that leads to hell and the small door is hard. There's even thorns, thorns that she can even go in, hardly go in. Because it's hard, brothers and sisters. If you think about it and you don't follow the Lord, it seems to be hard. Why? Because you're thinking, oh, you're not supposed to put polish on. You're not supposed to, you know, you're not supposed to put a lot of makeup on or high heels. You're you're not supposed to watch uh, porns anymore. You're not supposed to lie or steal. There's a lot of things that you're not supposed to do. And why do I have other people when you say to tell them, you know, forgive other people or love one another? Other people said, why will I love them if they did this to me? You know, I met a lady at one, uh, one restaurant yesterday and uh, the Lord led me there. And all of a sudden I started talking and she was telling me about her daughter, you know, molested and she was like crying we were talking about the lord and she opened up to me and i just said you know it's in the process of uh and process of uh the court and they're turning it around and they're saying that she's the one uh brainwashing her kid and i told her the lord said in the last days evil they will turn evil into good and good into evil did you see what's going on with the news? Even innocent people, they're turning it around and making them guilty. And people who are guilty, they will just say it's okay and just let them go.
that's what the Lord said. They're turning good into evil and evil, evil into good. I told her, pray to the Lord that you will be given justice. And if not, lift all your worries and problem to the Lord and let the Lord judge because He is the righteous judge. They might not give righteous judgment here, but when Jesus come, their, their judgment will fall upon them. And their wicked ways will really be punished by the Lord. And I even told her, I said, and she said, she can't, you know, she's mad and she can't forgive. And I said, sister, you know, I know. I said, you know what? I said, I was already, I was also molested when I was young, you know, by another kid. And he was a cousin of mine. But I said, I struggled with that for so long, keeping it safe in my mouth. And the same thing with my first husband. What happened? Did I build that anger in my heart? The Lord's putting it for so long in my heart to forgive, forgive. I don't even understand. When I told my story to my husband, he said, I don't understand why people are doing this to you and you just didn't even get mad at them. You just, you know, are still nice to these people. Do you know that I wept to the Lord about that? I said, Lord, why is it that, you know, people are hurting me and instead of me getting mad at them, I pity them. I pity them and I still forgive them until I found the Lord and read the Bible. I just realized the importance of forgiveness. In order for you to be forgiven is for you to forgive. They hurt you physically, but always remember you have the spirit of the Lord in you. In order for you to be forgiven by the Lord is for you to forgive and let the Lord deal with them. Make sure that your heart, your soul is saved. Forgive them. You know, and they will say, oh, they will be doing that. You know, we dislike, we don't like the evil deeds that they're doing. You know, don't take that wrong. We dislike all the evil deeds. But remember what the Lord said. We are not fighting against flesh and blood. We're fighting against the, the demon and principalities of this evil world. These human people are like homes. If they don't have Jesus in them, the bad spirit goes in them and possess them and tell them to do wicked things. And this is the importance why we have to accept Jesus. It is important as our Lord and our Savior. And it is also important that we have to read the Bible so we have wisdom, understanding, and discernment. And it's important that we will be born again. So the Spirit of the Lord will be given to us, the Holy Spirit, as a gift. Because once the Holy Spirit is in us, the Holy Spirit will help us to walk our life righteously with Christ. And then the devil can come they can't come to us anymore because we are you we have the spirit of the lord in us unless if you do wicked things and you sin at a particular moment and you doubt and you fear you're allowing the demon to have access in you and we rebuke that in jesus name amen we don't want any demon access on us in jesus name and if i say that don't argue because even peter Peter is the apostle of God. When he was telling Jesus, when he rebuked Jesus, Jesus told him, rebuke, I rebuke you, Satan, depart from me. Remember Jesus told that to Peter? Peter was his disciple. Why? Because Peter doubted. And Peter said words to stop Jesus from, the way, from doing the will of God. And so Satan can go into people and possess them in order to, to do something, to stop people from doing what is right and good. We don't want to allow Satan to have access in us. That's why constantly we have to be ready, brothers and sisters. We have to walk in the narrow gate. Therefore, we have to remember, brothers and sisters, Jesus is the fountain of the living water that will give us life everlasting. 
Second, everything is naked in the eyes of God. He sees what's on your mind and in your heart. Number three, wicked and sinners will hide and be thrown to hell. They will seek death but can't find it. Number four, when you obey God and walk in the light, demons will flee from you because the, spirit, the presence of the Lord is in you and the Holy Spirit is in you. Number five, people who are high and mighty, the proud will be brought low and be humbled, and those who are humble will be exalted by the Lord. Praise be to God. Number six, those who seek God and walk in the narrow path will find their way home and go to the, the narrow gate going to the narrow home with jesus christ in the new jerusalem praise be to god number seven because god prepared a place for us a home for us with him we need to constantly be ready we need to constantly rejoice because god is coming to get us because he prepared a home for us a room for us a home for us with him for eternity Therefore, brothers and sisters, the Lord said in Ephesians 6, verse 11, and so on, Put on the full armor of God, so that you can take your stand against the devil's scheme. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and pray in the Spirit in all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel. Praise be to God. Brothers and sisters, be ready. May the Lord bless us and keep us and shine His face upon us and be with us, be with the Lord for eternity. In Jesus' name, amen.